Gaming mice are probably the only category of PC gaming where you'll find top tier quality and features in the budget products. That means super flexible cables, some of the best sensors on the market and comfortable lightweight shells. So maybe you're looking to upgrade your setup or just improve your aim in first person shooters without spending a ton of cash you'll definitely want to check out these really affordable options first. So I've got five gaming mice in mind that I want to talk about today, all at $50 US or under. And the good news is whatever grip preference or hand size you have, you've got some options here. Now I want to start first with the gaming mouse that inspired me to make this video because I personally think it deserves a bit more attention and that's Razer's new Viper Mini. This is the third mouse in their Viper series after the original Viper and Viper Ultimate but personally I prefer the Viper Mini over both of those. Somehow Razer are able to put this out there for just $39 which is pretty insane because I think this is easily one of the best mice out there currently regardless of price. One way that they were able to achieve that lower price point was with a cheaper sensor. The Mini uses the PMW3359 as opposed to something more advanced like the 3389 that you'll find in the Viper Ultimate, but that doesn't make the Viper Mini sensor any less accurate or suitable for first person shooters. You're definitely not going to have any issues with spin outs or precise tracking. Now one main drawback of using that cheaper sensor in the Viper Mini is the higher lift off distance, that is the amount of distance that you can sort of lift the mouse off before it stops registering input. And on the Viper Mini, it's pretty high. It's about two millimeters. Usually a lower lift off distance is more preferred for first person shooters, but I think on the Viper Mini, it is definitely still within a comfortable range. You can supposedly adjust this within the mouse calibration section of the Razer Synapse software, but it doesn't make any meaningful difference in my experience. At the end of the day though, it all comes down to that shape and whether this is going to be comfortable for your hand size and grip. The Viper Mini is definitely for those who like to claw grip or fingertip grip their mouse as it is on the smaller end. If you do prefer to palm grip your mouse and have the whole hand resting on the entire shell, stay tuned for one of our other options. But I have tried a lot of very small ultralight gaming mice in the past and I think that overall the Viper Mini has the most balanced and considered shape. It doesn't feel cheap or unbalanced like the MM710. It's not too small like the Final Mouse Ultralight 2 and for a lot of people I actually think this is perfect for a small lightweight gaming mouse. The weight comes in at just over 60 grams, which I believe makes this the lightest gaming mouse without a honeycomb shell. So if you're bothered by those honeycomb cutouts on a lot of lightweight mice that we're seeing these days, the Viper Mini is pretty much perfect. Now, if you are currently on the fence about transitioning to a small lightweight gaming mouse, because currently you might be using something like a Logitech G703, there is definitely a learning curve. And at first you might completely hate it and put it back in the box and return it. But I really think that if you give it a couple weeks, maybe three or four weeks even, that you will prefer it quite a bit because I do believe generally that most people will aim better with a small and lightweight gaming mouse. On the note of the cable, it's easily one of the best that I've used. It's not as loose and flexible as the old glorious Model O cables, but in my opinion, that's a good thing. It's light enough to the point where it feels almost as good as wireless when paired with a good mouse bungee, but also rigid enough that it doesn't swing with every single mouse movement. And lastly, all of the buttons feel great. Not excellent like the ones on the G Pro wireless, but still some of the best on the market. The scroll wheel on the other hand is a bit average. Overall, this is easily one of the best gaming mice for first person shooters on the market. And for just $39, it really is an absolute steal. But if you're looking to get into the wireless game, but don't want to spend 150 US dollars on a G Pro wireless or Viper Ultimate, the G305 is a seriously good option at $49. So again, just like the Viper Mini, this is a smaller mouse and not really an option if you like to palm grip. Having said that, it does use the very popular shape from the Logitech G102, G203, and G Pro. Now you will find a regular AA battery in the box, which will give you some decent battery life and bring the mouse to around 100 grams, 
but by swapping to a AAA lithium battery and a AA adapter sleeve, you'll both reduce the weight to a little over 80 grams while also increasing the battery life to a few months. The G305 is also an excellent option if you game on a laptop and don't want to carry around a wired mouse, but also don't have a ton of cash to spring on one of those more premium options. No complaints on the buttons or scroll wheel for this one. I've easily got a few hundred hours on this exact G305 and it still feels brand new. So if you're looking to cut the cord and go wireless, definitely consider this option from Logitech. But now let's talk about the current range from Glorious. All of these are $49 and you've definitely got some options here in terms of different shapes and sizes. And how could we talk about lightweight and affordable gaming mice without talking about the Glorious Model O? This is definitely the mouse that sort of challenged the industry and pushed companies like Razer and Cooler Master to follow suit and create really light mice, but also at a decent price point. You can think of the Model O as kind of like the vanilla ice cream of lightweight gaming mice. It's got a really safe shape and size and I honestly think that 90% of gamers out there could adapt their grip to find the Model O really nice and comfortable. Then we've got the much smaller Model O Minus, which is one of the smallest and lightest gaming mice that you can currently buy, just 58 grams. And I'd really only recommend this one if you have smaller hands or game with a fingertip grip. Really don't underestimate how small this one is. Even for claw grip, it might not be suitable. I did try using it for claw grip for a while, but I found that there just wasn't enough support at the back and it was just too small overall. And lastly, the Model D, which is for those users who prefer a larger mouse with an ergonomic shape, but still value something really lightweight. So if you've got really large hands or just prefer to have the full mouse shell in your palm, this option is seriously good. Personally though, I would spring the extra $10 or so and get the Extrafy M4 instead. The buttons feel a bit nicer and the shape is much better in my opinion, specifically the lower main mouse buttons which feel a bit more natural to aim with. All of the glorious mice come with the PMW3360 sensor, the updated ascended cable which is one of the best on the market, clicky Omron switches and a honeycomb shell with RGB. For $49 that is really hard to beat, especially with some of the most comfortable shapes on the market. So it's pretty insane how much value you can get out of a $50 gaming mouse these days. Just a year ago, that was certainly not the case. And if you look at other PC gaming categories like keyboards, for example, $50 to $100 keyboards just are not that good. And you really do benefit from spending a whole lot in that category. Whereas gaming mice, you can get away with a $50 mouse that's actually really superb with really premium features. So I will have all of those options linked down below if you are interested. And I'll also link this uh, mouse bungee here. This is the Razer Mouse Bungee V2. It's one of the better bungees that you can get on the market. And if you are going with some of these wired options, it's not totally necessary, but it does definitely help. So as always, a huge thanks for watching. Consider subscribing down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you all in the next one.